So let's talk about condition taste aversion. Uh, your book calls it taste aversion learning, same thing. And this is something probably everybody has experienced. So you eat something, you get sick, and in the future you don't want to eat it again. All right, so first let's break down what are the four components. In fact, what I would love for you to do is think of an example. You have some food that you got sick on once and you don't like anymore. You, you avoid it. And I want you to pause the video and write down in your notes the U-S-U-R-C-S-C-R. Okay? So pause, push pause, go and do that. Did you do it? Okay. Let's see. Um, now... We know the learned response is our new um, response to this food. We don't like this food anymore. But what does this response really look at? like? What do you actually do if you smell the food or see the food or someone goes, hey, let's go out for Taco Bell. And you're like, ah. okay, think about what your actual responses are. Now, sometimes, you know, if you smell it, maybe it makes you nauseous. But for a lot of people, their taste aversions don't really make them feel sick. They just Maybe they make a weird face like, ooh, or maybe they say, no, thank you, I hate that stuff. So maybe there's a couple of overt responses, a facial expression, something you say that indicates you don't want this food. You could also put down, you avoid the food, you don't take it off the buffet, you, you know, any of those would be responses. So I'm gonna put an icky face. You might feel kind of sick, but it's actually kind of rare. Um, I'll put avoid food. You might say, no way, ick, whatever. But those are actual behaviors you do in response to what? What are the cues? It could be the smell. It could be the sight of the food. It could be somebody suggesting the food. Whatever the stimulus that gets you, you go, oh, that's the conditioned stimulus. Okay, now what was that paired with? And for some people, it was actually the food that made them sick. So you know, or the tequila, or the gin, or the shrimp, or whatever. Um, let's see, one of my versions is a Big Mac. I had a Big Mac. Um, and it actually did make me throw up. So, let's see. Uh, okay, that's actually, he's vomiting. Okay, gross. Now, so you might have that in your notes from what you figured out. Now, sometimes, however, it's not actually the food that made us sick. <laughs> Sometimes it's something else. Like, uh, in fact, when I ate the Big Mac, I was coming down with a stomach virus. Um, so, in fact, I was wrong that it, was, it wasn't the Big Mac. It was a virus that made me sick. But the Big Mac, the smell of it, the sight of it was still paired with me, you know, the thing that actually got me sick. This could be chemotherapy. People, that's an issue for people going through chemotherapy. You have to be careful not to build up this whole long list of aversions because whatever they ate that day, they get sick and they don't want to do it again. Now, so there's some strange things about condition taste aversion. Garcia, who um, was the one who first described this, and it's in chapter 11, by the way. I give you page numbers. Um, he, he had the hardest time getting it published because he thought this was a kind of classical conditioning, which it is, but it seems so different. The editors of journals kept saying, no, this is not classical conditioning. It doesn't fit the pattern. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. Here's why it doesn't fit the pattern. Um, the, probably the biggest issue is that it can be a very long delay between the time you eat the food and then you actually have a, a reaction. So these things are, the CS and the US are presented and then hours later, you're having, you're throwing up. So that would not work in any other um, classical conditioning thing. Think about if you rang a bell, and yeah, Anne gave that, well, let's see, how would it be? Um, you rang the bell, and like hours later, the dog got food. Okay, there's a very long, you know, delay there that he would never make the connection. So very long. I'm going to say CS US interval. But you still learn it. That's weird to have those things so far far separated and yet you still um, you still learn it. Okay. Two. Um, what is two? This is actually, well, this is kind of unusual. It only took one time to get sick. 
So we have other things that we can learn in one trial, but you know, classical conditioning, think if you rang the bell once, gave the dog food. Well, a few days later you ring the bell, he's not gonna respond to that. It takes, you know, several pairings for him to make a connection. This one time, like, oh, I got it. I never want to eat that again. You can get over aversions, but you know, we're very quick. The last one is not actually unique to conditioned taste aversion. It's true of all classical conditioning. But just interesting to note that it's we're quicker to pick these up with novel foods or new foods. So new food quicker to learn aversion. Um, and that just means, you know, if you have a plate of food and you have your chicken and mashed potatoes and your corn, and then grandma made this weird kind of blue jello salad, mm -hmm. um, and you got sick after that meal, you probably wouldn't have an aversion to the corn and the chicken and the potatoes. But the, that new weird blue thing, you might not want to eat that next time. <laughs> the novel thing, the new thing is what you're going to connect the um, aversion to. So this is an example of prepared learning. And I really would like you to understand the, um, the experiment, the bright, noisy, tasty water experiment in Garcia's, uh, that's also in the chapter. And what it basically tells you, I know it's a little confusing, but it tells you, all right, we took a bunch of rats and we tried to pair lights and tone with shock. And that worked fine. So lights and tone were a CS, shock was a US. They learned it. We tried to pair taste, like sweet water, taste with them getting a shock. Didn't make any connection. They didn't learn that connection. So then we took lights and tone and paired it with taste. No connection. A CS of something you've seen here, predicting a US of something you eat, no connection. Then we took taste, I'm sorry, screw that. Lights and tone with getting sick, that's one thing. Lights and tone, here you, you hear this noise and you see this light, and then later you're going to feel sick because we injected you with a drug. And they never made that connection. Fourth condition, taste, sweet water, later you got sick. They learned that, absolutely. That's just the condition, taste, aversion, that fourth thing. But what it showed us is that only some CSs and USs are going to be connected because some of them don't make sense. Biologically, we're built, we're prepared to learn certain things. And we are prepared to connect what we taste with how our tummy feels. We don't really connect as easily sounds with how our tummy feels. We also don't taste, uh, connect taste with a, a painful stimulus on our feet. That doesn't really, in nature, that just doesn't happen. But things we see in here with pain, that connection, that makes sense. Um, so read that part. It's, um, it just shows why this is an example of prepared learning. We are biologically built to connect this. Rats are really good at conditioned taste aversion. I bet you didn't know that rats cannot throw up. Mm, pretty cool, huh? So that's why they're very hard to poison. They're very picky eaters. And if they don't know a food, like you put rat poison out and they've never eaten this before, it's some kind of food in a dish and they're like, mm, that's new. And they go up, they'll just taste a little tiny bit of it. So they'll get a really small dose of poison and it'll just make them sick. It won't kill them. And then they'll never eat that food again. So they're almost impossible to poison because they just taste it. They're like, oh, gross. I'm not having that again. They won't go up and go, yeah, what's this? Because that, and that would kill. And like if we eat something that's poisonous, uh, we can usually at least eject it by vomiting. Um, and so we can overdo it sometimes and still survive. Rats don't have that option. So they're really good at connecting taste and illness. Uh, condition taste aversion. All right, that should do it.